What is a porcupine? Porcupines are intriguing rodents known for their coats of sharp quills. These quills, modified hairs coated in a thick layer of keratin, are their hallmark feature. There are two major groups of porcupines, old world porcupines, mainly found in Africa, Europe, and Asia, and new world porcupines, primarily found in the Americas. Although they share many similarities, these two groups have distinct behaviors, habitats, and histories. Today, we will explore how geography and ecology help shape these differences. Let's start with the basics. Old world porcupines, such as the African crested porcupine, are generally larger, strictly terrestrial, and have quills arranged in clusters. They often reside in rocky outcrops, burrows, and savannas. New world porcupines, like the North American porcupine, and the prehensile tail porcupine are typically smaller, more arboreal, and boast a specialized tail that helps them navigate trees. New world porcupines prefer forested areas, tropical, temperate, or boreal, where their climbing skills give them safe refuge among the branches. Only new world porcupines are well adapted for climbing. Old world species stay firmly on the ground. Old world porcupine quills tend to be longer and thicker forming a sort of mohawk along their backs. New World quills are often shorter and barbed, designed for easier embedding into the flesh of predators. <laughs> the differences in their quills reflect their environments and the type of predators they face. Typically, porcupines are nocturnal or crepuscular, most active around dawn and dusk. In Old World species, you might see them shuffle along the ground, sniffing out roots or gnawing on bones for calcium. New World species, by contrast, spend a good portion of their time sleeping in trees during the day, safely hidden from predators. Solitary by nature, porcupines do not usually form large social groups. Instead, each individual carves out a territory, occasionally tolerating a mate or offspring. The relatively solitary lifestyle helps reproduce competition for limited free resources. Porcupines are generally shy, solitary, and defensive creatures. They only become aggressive if cornered or threatened. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons or the porcupines might just leap out of your screen and attack you with their spikes. <laughs> Chapter 2 Prey and Predators Porcupines are herbivores. They feed on a variety of plant materials, bark, leaves, buds, fruit, and even the occasional seeds. Old world porcupines might forage on the ground, snacking on tubers, roots, and the bark of saplings. New world porcupines, often found in high forest canopies, dine on twigs, fruits, leaves, and sometimes cambium layers of trees that they painstakingly strip away. In the dense forests of the Americas, these arboreal specialists delicately maneuver through tree canopies to reach tender leaves. This difference in feeding strategy is one reason their tails are used to this type of thing. By consuming bark and pruning foliage, porcupines can influence plant community structure. They also disperse seeds, indirectly supporting various other wildlife and their ecosystems. Through selective feeding, porcupines help shape the forests and landscapes they inhabit. Their feeding habits create niches for other organisms and can encourage growth of new vegetation. If you want to learn more about small animals, check out my videos on squirrels. They're both rodents and can climb trees with relative ease. Despite their impressive defenses, porcupines are not invincible. Old, old world porcupines might face lions, leopards, or hyenas. In the Americas, predators such as fishers, cougars, and wolverines have learned to attack a porcupine's vulnerable belly. Fishers in particular are famously adept at flipping porcupines over to reach their unprotected underside. <laughs> Yet, many predators think twice before attempting a porcupine hunt. Often the risk of injury outweighs the reward, ensuring porcupines remain relatively safe in their chosen habitats. Quills are their primary defense, deterring predators from attacking. When threatened, porcupines will clatter their quills, stomp their feet, and if pushed to the limit, swing their rear ends towards a predator. The quills can become lodged in the attacker's face or body making a painful lesson. Oh, man! <sighs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. But it leads to a common myth. Contrary to popular belief, porcupines do not shoot their quills. This myth comes from observing quills falling out during an attack, but the animal itself cannot fire them projectile style. Quills detach easily upon contact. No ballistic mechanism involved, unfortunately. Humans have long been fascinated by porcupines. In some cultures, porcupine quills are valued as decorative items. Indigenous peoples in North America have traditionally used quills for intricate beadwork and handicrafts. In parts of Africa and Asia, porcupines are occasionally hunted for meat and their quills are used as ornaments or tools. Sometimes porcupines come into conflict with farmers and gardeners by gnawing on wooden structures or crops. Yet, with proper understanding and management, like using porcupine-proof fencing, these conflicts can be minimized. Most porcupine species are not currently endangered, but habitat loss, poaching, and climate change could threaten certain populations in the future. Conservation organizations and wildlife agencies are working to protect their habitats and promote coexistence. Chapter 3 Love and Family Life Porcupine courtship is a subtle affair. Typically, a female signals her readiness to mate with distinct vocalizations and scent markings. Males may become aggressive with rivals, showcasing their size or weaponry. Yes, even their quills can come into play to impress or intimidate. After a gestation period ranging from about 16 to 31 weeks, old world porcupines often have shorter gestations than their new world counterparts. Females give birth to a single offspring or occasionally twins. Porcupets, or baby porcupines, are born well-developed with soft quills that harden within hours for immediate protection. Their eyes are open at birth, and they can move around shortly afterward. For the first few weeks, they rely on their mother's milk while their quills and bodies strengthen. By about two months, they begin eating solid foods like bark, leaves, and fruits, learning essential skills like foraging and using their quills for defense. During this stage, they closely follow their mother, exploring their environment and honing their instincts. By two to three months, porcupets become more independent, venturing further from their mother's side while still within her territory for safety. As they approach one to two years of age, they are fully grown and ready to establish their own territories, often traveling great distances to find suitable habitats. Their natural instincts, combined with their mother's early guidance and their protective quills, ensure that they are well equipped to navigate life in the wild. Chapter 4 Fun Facts and More Now for some fun facts about porcupines that you may not know about. 1. A rodent relative. Porcupines are part of the rodent family, related to mice, rats, and beavers, but much larger and definitely spikier. 2. Chisel sharp teeth. They have ever-growing incisors, allowing them to gnaw through tough bark and branches. 3. Long Lives Porcupines can live surprisingly long lives for rodents. Some species survive up to 15-20 years in captivity. 4. Spine Counting A single porcupine can have up to 30,000 quills, offering a formidable level of protection. 5. Intelligence Porcupines have been observed solving basic puzzles to get food and remember their feeding sites. They are also curious and adaptable in their environments. Porcupines may be prickly, but they are also fascinating. Gentle creatures that deserve our respect. From their impressive quills to their quirky behaviors, they are a reminder of how diverse and incredible nature truly is. There you have it. Now you know what porcupines are, what they do, how they behave, and then some. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one, Lord willing. Take care, and to God be all the glory.